I'm Jancy to Spain with Bright Idea Tutoring. This is the third video in a six-part series on aldol reactions. In the first two videos, you learned about aldol additions, which occur in cold temperatures. In this video, you're going to learn about the full condensation reaction, which occurs in warm temperatures and conjugated systems. First, there's an addition. Then there's an elimination step that causes the full condensation reaction. I'm going to teach you the mechanism and also the easy way to predict product. But beware, this video is not going to make a whole lot of sense to you unless you've seen parts one and two. So make sure you're watching this series in order. Thanks a bunch for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you've watched the second video in my series on predicting products of aldol addition reactions, then you should be pretty comfortable with how I took this ketone, acetone, and created this beta hydroxy ketone, an aldol addition product. Now I need to show you how things would be a little bit different if I had done this reaction under warm conditions. Sometimes you're going to see just the word warm or the word heat or maybe a specific warm temperature like 80 degrees Celsius or 110 degrees Celsius. But when you see some indication that the reaction has been done with heat, you're going to have to do a second step to predict your product. Not just the addition reaction, but also an elimination reaction. And when we say elimination, it really is the same kind of elimination that you learned in first semester organic. We're going to eliminate a leaving group and form a carbon-carbon double bond. In this case, our leaving group is going to be water, H2O. And that's why we call this aldol reaction a condensation. The definition of a condensation reaction is when two small molecules come together to form a larger one and water is released as a byproduct. Predicting the elimination products of this reaction is so easy. If I had drawn this as my addition product, and I wanted to change it to my elimination product, all I'd have to do is erase my hydroxy group. That means erase my OH and the bond. And then form a carbon-carbon double bond between the beta carbon and the alpha carbon. Just like this. And I can make it look a little better by creating correct stereochemistry at that carbon. This is no longer a beta hydroxy ketone. It's now an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. Here we can compare the two types of products you might get from this ketone, depending on whether we do the reaction cold or warm. First, we need to decide which alpha carbon is going to attack. And of course, that depends on which base we use. LDA chooses the less hindered alpha carbon. So I'm going to create an enolate and then I'm going to let that carbon attack the carbonyl of another molecule. I'm just going to draw this bond and push the electrons up onto the O. And when I redraw my product now, this just looks lovely. <laughs> there it is. Now, if this were done in heat, I wouldn't have this beta hydroxy ketone. I would instead have an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. So all I need to do to draw that is instead erase this OH and draw my double bond between the beta and the alpha. This is my alpha-beta unsaturated product. You'll notice I have seven carbons in my main chain, my ketone on carbon three, and my double bond between the alpha and beta carbon. And you'll notice here that I have the E version of the molecule there will be a mixture of E and Z. Here's a chance for you to practice. Why don't you hit pause and go ahead and predict products both of the addition step and of the elimination step. Now, this reaction is done in acid, and that's a little different, sure. Um, the mechanism is going to be different, and we're going to talk about the mechanism in acid versus base later. But when you're predicting product, the mechanism doesn't really matter. We're just going to use the same silly techniques to predict products, no matter whether it's an acid or base. So you're not going to worry about this. You're just going to do the addition product and the elimination product, and then we'll come back and compare. This is what I got. 
you can see that between these two alpha carbons, only this one has a proton. So this is the one that I had to choose to do the attacking. I drew a bond between this alpha carbon and my carbonyl and pushed the electrons up onto the O. And this is the result I got. If that looks a little weird to you, it's because this molecule has been flipped horizontally to allow a little bit more space for the molecules to come together. And of course, I now have a single bond to O, and my O has been protonated. But draw the elimination step, my OH has been removed, eliminated, and I've formed a double bond between the alpha carbon and the beta carbon. Now you may be thinking, this reaction wasn't done in heat, why would it do the elimination step? <sighs> Molecules that have conjugation, like this one, and I mean conjugation before we do the elimination, are prone to do the elimination step even if they're not done in heat. Check this out. Right now, this carbon-carbon double bond is conjugated with this benzene ring, and there's conjugation over here. But this conjugated area is separated from that other conjugated area. If we can form a double bond right here, this entire molecule becomes conjugated, and that's really stable. So the molecule wants to become more stable, and so it's going to be driven to do the elimination step. So you always want to keep your eyes open for not just warm temperatures, but also for the presence of conjugation. Because in either one of those situations, you're going to go ahead and do this elimination step and give the condensation product. Let's try one more example. Can you predict the aldol condensation products of this reaction? This is the answer I got. Hopefully yours looks something like this. And again, don't forget that any double bond you create is going to be a mixture of cis and trans or E and Z. You're going to get a lot more practice on both the beta hydroxy aldehydes and ketones, the addition products, and also these alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes and ketones, the condensation products, in the next two videos when you learn about crossed aldols and intramolecular aldols. So if you want some more practice, just keep watching. Unfortunately, you don't just need to know how to predict products of the elimination step. You probably need to know how to do the mechanism too. And this one, especially the acid one, is kind of a crazy little mechanism that professors love to hide on your exam. So I'm gonna take you through it step by step, and hopefully by the end of it, it won't seem so bad. Whenever I'm asked to do this kind of mechanism, I always want to first make sure that all the features of my molecule are clear. I want both of my O's to have their electron pairs. I want the H on my hydroxy group to be sort of separated from my O so that it'll be easily visible. And I also want my alpha hydrogens to be individually drawn so that I can find them. Then my first step is to form the enol from whatever carbonyl I have, a ketone or an aldehyde. And you notice how I've got these little arrows here. This is just to help me remember that step one is an equilibrium step, so is step two, and then steps three and four are not equilibrium steps. That's gonna help me remember what kind of arrows I need to draw in my mechanism. All right, so first I'm just gonna form an enol from a carbonyl. That has its own little individual steps that might be hard to remember. If you need to remember how to form an enol or enolate ion, you can go back and watch my video on that material. So my first step in forming an enol is to protonate my carbonyl with whatever acid I have present. Now my carbonyl oxygen is protonated and my anion can come and remove one of my alpha hydrogens. When this alpha hydrogen is removed, the electrons go to form a carbon-carbon double bond and push the electrons up onto the O. Now you can see I filled in my equilibrium arrows, and I'm going to draw my product now. And you can see that now I have a single bond to O and a double bond between these two carbons. I've actually formed my enol. 
My next step is to protonate my hydroxy group. And make sure when you protonate your hydroxy group, we mean the alcohol hydroxy group, not the enol hydroxy group. And don't forget, use equilibrium arrows. I'm the worst at remembering those. Next, we're going to use three arrows to eliminate water. They're going to start here at what used to be our carbonyl oxygen. We're going to push our electrons down to reform the carbonyl. These electrons are going to move over, and then we're going to kick off water. We've now reformed our carbonyl oxygen, but it's still protonated. And we're starting to look close to our final products. All that's left is that we need to deprotonate our O, and that is our final step. So we're going to use our anion from the acid to grab this hydrogen and push the electrons back onto O. There's our final elimination product, the condensation product, which is an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. Now let's look at this mechanism in base, which thankfully is quite a bit easier. All we need to do for the base catalyzed mechanism is two easy steps. First, we're going to let our base remove a proton from the alpha carbon. And these electrons are going to sit right here as a carb anion. Now, normally we would take this electron pair and push it up this way on the way to forming an enolate ion. But this time, we're going to push it in this direction. We're going to take this electron pair and form a carbon-carbon double bond between the alpha carbon and the beta carbon, and then let it kick off OH as a leaving group. And normally, OH would be a terrible leaving group. But since we're in warm conditions and we're already in a basic solution, it's actually OK. The fact that we're creating a conjugated system drives this reaction. And even though this is a little bit weird, we're just going to go with it. And now we have our final product, our alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. Now you've got these mechanisms, but don't forget, as far as predicting products go, we're just going to use the same simple procedure that you've learned before. These mechanisms are only for if your professor specifically asks you to do the mechanism. I don't recommend going through this whole process just for predicting product. If you have any questions, just ask in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching.